I was hoping to get my Nixie tube video out earlier than this, but I had a bit of an accident. I was packing this away. Although I've cut the power supply leads in at a different length to stop them shorting, as I was putting this away, I accidentally touched the clock clip there to that potentiometer, the little metal earth around the potentiometer. There was a big spark. I thought I got away with it. And if I look really close at it, it does seem to be okay. There's no nothing blackened or anything. But then look at the power that's coming out of it. 4.5 volts. It should be 120. And it's pulling a load of power out of my power supply. So if I'm really fortunate, I've just blown this thing up. So I've got some more. They were quite cheap. There was 2.95 for five of them. So they're a bit of a commodity. I'm just going to try and take this out and compare the voltages on this one with the voltages on that one and see whether it's that that's blown. Otherwise, it might be something deeper that I can't do anything about. I could use my desoldering hot air. I don't really want to use that because I don't want to pop that capacitor. So... so I'm going to try and lift the legs of this as I'm putting the soldering iron onto it. Now that to me makes me think that might be broken anyway because I wasn't putting that much pressure on that. Oh well, at least I'll never know whether this one's broke or not now but I can change it anyway. Okay, that came off relatively easy as well you know i honestly think the easiest thing to do i can't test this now i've broke it the easiest thing for me to do now is just to solder a new one onto it and then i know straight away this will either fix it or i'll think it's something else a little bit cleared that bit off so that i can lay the new one flat on there Okay, let's connect it up again and see whether I'm getting a better voltage through it now. This is the output this side and it's just going to some crop clips to the probes. So they're out the way. I'll just plug the main 12 volts in. Okay, so this is live now. Can you still see that? Yeah. So let's do negative first. So I'm really hoping when I connect this, I'm going to get 100 odd volts now. Let's see. No. Oh well, it was worth a go. I just noticed that this is a diode next to it. So I've taken the diode off using hot air, which is a PJ20 something. Oh, this is the diode setting. And if I do it one way, it lets nothing through. If I do it the other way, it doesn't beep, but it lets 5.4 through. Is that out? A diode should work. I don't know. I know it lets voltage through one way, but not the other. So maybe that one is working. I'll just see how much they are and maybe I can get another one and see whether I can still fix it. Okay, one last go with this. Well, maybe three last goes. I'll replace this diode there. It's not on at the moment. That didn't solve the problem. The only thing I can think of is this. Either this chip or this little MPN, I think, transistor there. Everything else seems fine. I managed to get, get hold of some of them. There's a new diode. Uh, it was right, by the way. One way it lets about 500 something. The other way it lets nothing through. So that was fine as well. Compared that against new ones. So I'm not going to film this, but I'm just going to try replacing both the little controller chip, which I have a new version of here, and that little MPN if the controller chip doesn't work. I'm not going to film this, but I'll come back afterwards. OK, so I've put the MOSFET back on and I've put the diode back on. Uh, not very well. I was trying to use hot air to do that top one. But more importantly, I was able to use hot air to swap out the controller chip in there. I've still got some spares to change that one at the end, but I thought I'd do the ones in the middle first because I'm more likely to bust something else when I'm replacing it. So let's try it. So I'll connect my multimeter to the output with crop clips. Let's go wide a little bit. I've just remembered, let me put that over it so I don't get into the situation that 
started this video so that will go to this is my output so black there and red to the other one you should be able to see the power now as this is going up to 100 odd volts i'll set it to the 200 volt range this one does dc and ac at the same time this side i need to connect the black and the red up this is the input and then tell you what change the other camera angle and then we can see the voltages on the voltmeter so hopefully you can see that so i've connected the input and the output there and i've connected it to my power supply here so at the moment i'm putting in three volts and there's about three volts coming up now it was doing that before before i broke it so let's try and up the voltage going in because it should be 12 volts did you see as i'm going up on that the voltage as i'm turning the voltage in up on that 4.2 volts over this side it's going up as well so when i get to 12 volts hang on yeah as soon as i hit nine i'm beginning to do the 130 volts out and now let's take that down to about 12 again and obviously the little potentiometer on it if i change that i could up that so it was 180 volts so there you go i fixed it so it was that microcontroller chip so there you go i fixed my nixit tube converter that i blew up by touching the positive of the output to the little variable resistor shell and it was the microprocessor yeah that's a successful repair so the actual chips themselves were i think i bought three for about four pound so hardly anything for the chips whereas these boards in the uk if i can get them are about 15 pounds so worth trying to repair if you've got a hot air station to uh, reflow the solder around the chip and if you enjoyed this please subscribe bye <laughs>